Ido is a very a lot of sword people around. Iaido. What's the difference between Iaido and Iaijitsu? What's the difference? What's Bato Jitsu and what's Kenjutsu? Are they all the same? Who has heard of any of those words, or perhaps all of them in anime and stuff? They're all they're all over the place. It's like what means what? <laughs> I heard jitsu, something like the art or way or something. These have to do almost always with history, where they are in history. So if you look at the kanji, a lot of the ways you can learn about what you're studying is to find the kanji and then find what they mean. And then as you put them together, it'll, it'll kind of tell you what it's doing. So E, this kanji means to be present in the moment to be hyper aware of what's happening. So that's, if you say Iaido is the art of fast drawing the sword, well you're connected enough to know when to draw it. So you're really aware of your enemy and where they are. You're aware of spatial, where people are. I, as an Aikido, you've heard of Aikido, it's the way of harmony. So I'm being present and I'm in harmony with the opponent or with the universe, and then you just add jitsu or do, because they're kind of interchangeable. Ei jitsu is the art of being present and in harmony. So people are, well, isn't it fast drawing? Yes, it's, that's all in there. But if you think of a deeper term, it's being so present with your weapon. And this would work for military with a gun modern days, too. Like if you're a hunter, you're almost at one with the bow, you know what I mean? You're at one with the deer in the forest and your rifle. It's not a trivial thing. They say that jitsu is the art of and do is the way. Some would argue that do is a deeper term than jitsu. So the art of something is like, yeah, I'm good at painting, but I don't live as a painter. I'm not an artist. I don't die by the paintbrush. Whereas the way is a deeper term. Karate do, aikido, kendo. These are almost like they do the physical and the spiritual with it. So it's like a deeper thing. Uh, Budo, which we are, the way of war, the way of studying war, in some cases the way of the peacemaker. But look, Iaido was started in 1932. That is not long ago in history. People think it's old. No. Older style is what they call Bato Jitsu. So let's break down this. I don't know if you've heard of Bato, Bato Jitsu. Ba is to extract. To extract the sword or the blade, the art of or the craft of. So Bato Jitsu, you could argue Bato Jitsu is the same as EI, but it's just a different name, perhaps a different period of time, different schools of study. So Bato Jitsu is usually associated with older times. If they didn't have EI before 1932, the word, then they would have called it Bato Jitsu. Then you have Kenjutsu. Kenjutsu just means, um, that's an umbrella term, the art of the sword. And Kenjutsu, usually, from my teachers tell me, it's when the sword is drawn and you're using it opponent to opponent. Battlefield swordsmanship is Kenjutsu, the art of the sword. However, Bato Jitsu is in Kenjutsu because you have to draw your sword at some point. So you better be good at drawing it in battle. You don't want to be in the battle and you're in armor so you have a little more time and you're like this can't get it out so you're poor at bato and therefore you die before you even start kenjutsu a lot of ei schools which are modern don't even work with other people it's all solo work you ever seen the old guys on the mat and they sit and say out and they're super careful how they draw and they do all these stylistic movements it's fine it's ei but it's not with a combat situation. It's not a person coming at them. So it's a different study. Like I can go to the uh, range, we go to the gun range and practice firearms, but I'm not fighting like in the police force where I'm, uh, there's a bad guy coming at me. And that's a whole different ball game. So what we study a lot in here, we, we do study bato, but it depends on the period of history. So let's go to that board. Look, <laughs> we have a whole timeline here. I hope you don't mind this depth. I think it's important to know. Come in close here, 538 CE or AD, however you say it. All these different periods of time. 
there's not a lot written here, but all the swords stuff would have been from China, coming over from China. But not a lot of uh, strife in Japan, some. But this, the medieval period of Japan, is when there was a lot of fighting going on. So the Kamakura period, Muromachi, Azuchi period, and what I call the Sengoku, which is the, which is 1467 to 1600. This was the battlefield period, Sengoku Jidai, the warring states period. This is when Japan was fighting itself. It's like, remember our civil war, it was like that everywhere. But not like the north versus the south, it was like daimyo versus daimyo. It was like Butler and Warren County fighting versus Hamilton County. All these counties were fighting. So that's this period of time. This was the time where they had armor, the Yoroi armor, horses, massive battles with hundreds or thousands of people, big, big battles. And they would do what? They would do Kenjutsu. The sword, you knew your opponent was coming a mile away, so you wouldn't bother with quick drawing. The guy never got that close. What would you start with? Archery. See someone coming over the hill, lob your arrows, right? hopefully kill a few, they get closer. Next thing you grab is what? A spear, which was the best battlefield weapon, or naginata. This was like fourth, fifth down the list of weaponry. So I wouldn't bother with Iai, Iaido wasn't there. Robato didn't exist, so you would never get that close, but you would use Kenjutsu. Now, if we continue after 1600, when the Edo period started, which is peacetime, Tokugawa era, the, uh, the leader unified everybody. They just stopped fighting. So what happened to the armor? Obsolete. What happens to the military? Fired. What happens if you're a samurai, you're born and bred to be a military leader, a fighter, and then you lose your job? All these samurai movies that we love are usually here. The peacetime. Have you ever heard of a ronin? A wandering samurai, a masterless samurai? All those, who knows the movies I'm talking about. They don't wear armor anymore. They wear kimono and these rough looking, poor samurai wander the roads aimlessly looking for work. They're great sword fighters, but they have no job. So what do they do to get work? They hunt, they become bodyguards, which is a real, real thing. They try to get employment anywhere they can. They can't go into the craftsmanship because that's a whole other class. And those that make, you know, that make houses and things, the, they already have their job. They're not military people. So the samurai in the Edo period were kind of wandering, most of them. What would you do? Open a sword school. If I have a skill in the sword, I'm going to try to find someone who's rich and then say, hey, I'm really good with the sword. Let me show you my skills. Can you please give me some money to open a sword school? And this worked with the leaders. A lot of martial arts schools opened, like hundreds of kendos, kenjutsu schools opened up. And then this was the period where the ninja were involved, uh, working for the leaders, gathering information. But in peacetime, this is what we're dealing with tonight. We are not dealing with Sengoku in the battlefield. We're not wearing armor tonight. We are wearing pajamas. We have one sword, maybe two, and we have no armor. So the swords in that period are what in the modern day? Shorter, lighter, shorter handle. Suka was much shorter. And these could be used with one or two hands. In the old days, the swords are super heavy, and you need to hold them here to armor. In this time, you can use them one hand, like Musashi, or two swords. So can you see this little bullet point here? This is what we're dealing with tonight. A lot of the stuff we study in this martial art, we have two philosophies. One is old style, one is new with sword. We do a lot here. Remember when Arno was here last year? Everything we did had to do with the armor fighting. The DVD that we produced is all armor fighting. Person against person, mano a mano on the battlefield. Tonight we're dealing with this quick draw to save your life. So tonight, it is okay to be a little quicker than normal and uh, know that you have no protection for your body, no armor. So let's practice the attack. Everybody face the mirror next to me in a line. 
Make sure it's a katana in this case, so the blade is up. Turn it over, blade up. Not blade down unless you want to be Johnny Depp. Here. I'm just going to show you, we don't have a lot of time, I'm just going to show you one way to draw. Your right foot comes here. Your right foot enters into battle. Your right foot turns out. This gives you support on the dirt if it's wet. Bloody battlefield or here. Ice, snow. Straight and I'll slip here. And then your knee bends. Now I'm opening my hip up. Now I can draw my sword. Left hand here on the saya. Right thumb pops the super guard to free it from the scabbard. Do that with me if you haven't. Horizontally. And then from here, I back a straight, grabbing the handle here, pulling the saya back with your hip, drawing the sword out to cut horizontally somewhere, body, neck, head, leg, anywhere. Go ahead and put it back and reset. Very basic fundamental draw, a forward draw. I'm still on line with the opponent. One and a half. Half is the turn, turning over. Slowly pull the hip back, keep the pommel toward the opponent. As it comes out, it cuts across. The sword stops in line with your arm, don't overextend. It's literally under my right arm here. Just stop, once you miss, don't open yourself for attack. Say the guy jumps back, which we're going to do, this is pointed toward their eye or chest here or neck. One more, please. She's in, relaxed. Let's cut out the steps here, so watch me first. One. Try that at your leisure. I want you to do 20 of these, go. Who's ever heard of kendo? That's super, super, super modern. With a shinai, and they, it's a sport, and they hit each other. Very good sport, but not kenjutsu, very different. Not at all, No depth. Not nowhere near the depth of kenjutsu my opinion. So kendo is all up here, you know, high, light, quick, super fast. Good, but not kenjutsu. The foot, this moving of the foot does many things. It, it changes my balance, turns my hips, opens up the sword, and closes the distance. I've now gone two feet closer to him. If he's up here talking to me, he may not even notice that little foot shift. He does, but the average person may not. Especially if you're wearing what? Hakama. The divided skirt is quite large. You ever seen them? I, I, should, I have many. I should bring it and wear it to show you. But the skirt's this big, so when I move, he doesn't even see my foot. He just sees the skirt all the way to the ground. And the idea of this is so that when I'm here, I can cut somewhere quick. Now, his job as the opponent, as the good guy, is to move out back. Start in Shizen, hands down on a sword. I'm going to approach him. Slow, line to line. My left foot's bent. I'm gonna slide here and get just enough distance I know I can cut him from here. Don't move. As I draw and cut, here, across the body. Dogiri, Ryogogiri. Just touching with the last inch, it's all you need. Okay. He's going to allow me to cut him. So it's one, two here cutting. Ichi, ni, san. Stop right there. Do like five each and switch. Go. What does he need to do? Shift back. Shift back. Explain what you're doing. So we were talking about how good the training is and how important a good shizen posture is. So my feet are hip width apart and we talked about having maybe a piece of paper you could fit underneath my heels. So I'm kind of on my toes just a little bit. And the reason why is because then now if I move from my tom, then I can move in any direction. Any, we talk eight, I can go forward, diagonals, sides, diagonals, or straight back. In this case, if you watch my hips, my hips are the ones that take me back. My hips, it's almost like you fall back. Whoo, fall. Watch this, this will be incorrect. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or this would even be worse. 
trying to move. And I'm exaggerating on purpose because I want it to be so subtle, he thinks that, that he killed me. He got my sword. Mm. Mr. Norfleet's the one to watch. His head won't move when he moves. Whoop. We're back here. Now, here's what we're going to add on. Instead of just standing here, as I shift back, I'm grabbing my sword and I'm starting to pop it the way that we did before. My next attack, I'm not going to sit here, several things I could do. One possible thing is I could move in and try to stab him. Very valid. And hope that the tip hits him. But a, a normal, even more common, is from one here, I reset and go to cut here. Diagonally or straight down. Whether it's Daijunan, Jodan, Hasso. So, one, I can't hit him, but now if I'm here, I can get him. So you're gonna go into Dai Jodan from here. You can be here. Jodan no Kamai, Hasso makes no difference as long as it's up somewhere. It's a high posture. And your job is to try to cut down at his head or the Kesa. So he moves back. The Ma'ai is good. The interval of time and space he's created has foiled me. Don't move. My next job is to go here or here or even here. Diagonally forward this direction. So the person attacking is going to win, yet he's going to move with his Tanden. Ichi, ni, san. Stop there. I went a little too close to him, but I'm just showing you exaggerated. Don't hit. You have a, who has a wooden one? May I, Kathy? Arigato. So when you're here, it's one, two, three, or if you're farther, step through. Please don't clunk him in the head. Try that out. I don't think that there's a right or a wrong way to do school, it. Every school will be different. Left shoulder, right shoulder straight. That's a, maybe it's a distance thing where if I try to get, if I try to get a demon, he's so close, I can just go right here and get him. Versus if he's back way away, maybe I would take a little bit of a bigger step, right? So maybe you play with the distance and decide which strike you like better. And we're in a battle here. He's moving in. I want to go here, coming from underneath. Again, as if you're here, as he's coming in, I want to look like I'm not ready. I'm here, I'm not ready. On the last part, as he comes in, it's one, two across the body. <laughs> so the sword is from this position across. It goes right, left. I want him to see flashing steel. I want him to see that I'm still in play and that at the last second I move. It's a small zigzag, but it's dangerous because on the first part, go slow. I'm still in front of him and then it goes here. If I go too early, he'll change the movement. Here, waki. Waki means armpit or side. Waki giri. Now, if I cut, it's possible I'll do like a little flesh wound, right? He's still in the fight. If you can, make the sword into a piece of iron, one that will hold him back here. Mm -hmm. This is going to win. Now my shoulders against his taijutsu. The sword is jammed into the waki here, into the butsumetsu. Therefore, he cannot turn on me. Here, I'm in trouble. However, if he turns, I can go vertical and make sure that it, he doesn't come in. But I'd like you to start slow and stay slow. Don't go at my speed here. One, two. It's footwork. And then you place the sword. Again. 
each. Go! Oh, yeah. Then you can come in this way. If you needed to. Relax. She's at Relax. As relaxed as you can get in a sword fight. Step back with the tandem. He's now, or she, has done the cross cut. They're now setting up for the, for the final kill. Real, real slow. Same movement. The sword is drawn out. I have not moved offline. I want them to think I have you, but they don't see this little movement. Then at the last second, it changes directions. As I step left and allow the sword to go into this wacky giddy here. Real slow. Whoa! Don't draw yet. He's got me. Here. And then close the distance. Cut the eye into this koku space. Using your body and leverage to cut deep. If you're gonna retreat, push him away and watch him bleed out if you need to. Okay? Then you can do this fancy stuff after. It's junk on the battlefield. Here. Taijutsu. That's very important. Shahashi, mm -hmm. here. Using your body, yo! <laughs> Pushing him away. Three timings. One timing is I'm early. I move and do something early, right? Your E, your E are connected. Another timing is it's in the middle of something. In other words, I'm meeting him. He's coming in, I'm going in. Here. This is late timing. It's a late timing, therefore it's very difficult because I'm almost dead here. It's here that I start to move. Now that is the hardest of all, I think, is to be late. But here's what's happening. You can do this. Someone's going to be like, well, why can't I just, just do this and stab him? You can. Of course you can. It's easier because you're cutting out a whole step. This is perfectly fine to do a ski thrust. But there's a risk I'll miss him, sure, because it's straight. But it's, so if you want to make this simpler, it can be one and then just two here. Now I'm offline and I've stabbed him. But I didn't use Taijutsu and get close enough. What I'm seeing is, is you're, you're doing quite well here and you get here, but then you stop and you, you're at this distance. I'm here. I've used, I'm now relying on the weapon to kill him. It's not about the weapon. This is an extension of me. So watch the difference. One. Could survive, sir, certainly. We're equal. Watch now. Ready? Here. I want to win. Hopefully. Now I'm, I'm controlling him. I have no control of him here. It's blade on blade. Star Warsy type stuff. Kenjutsu is controlling the body of who wields the sword. Armor, as if I'm still in armor. The old days of grand, granddad, I'm still here, granddad. I'm still doing it right. Mm. The way you taught me as a child. One point of contact, two and three, even four. The more points of contact, more chances of surviving. The less contact I have, we become even partners. And then it's just a matter of speed. I'm going to show you a couple variations that you can play with, even if you're even more late. As he draws from here, this one, you're going to come down this way. He said, let him cut. Watch my sword, not his. Here. I, I, I drew the sword, and then I went this position. Now the blade goes down and cuts here. You cannot get close on this one. You have to use distance. <laughs> it's here. See that one? So your sword is hitting the back of his blade again. Here. 
or on the arm. But look at my position, it's not here. It's either here or it's here, but it's in a good position. That's one, are you making notes of these? Another is the ski. You should be practicing this with me. Do what I do here, practice here. This one, just bring it here. Draw it and just put the tip toward him. So by yourself, it's here. Still offline, watch my feet. It's still here, pivoting offline. Then drive that in. Another. Here, cut the wrist. Done. What did I do on that one? This one? Retreated. I went backwards. It's safer than the other. Huh? Height here. Watch it real slow. Use the line of the mat. See it? Watch. We're on a train track. Train track of death. Here. Coltigiri. Out of reach. Sever thumb. Done. For now. Again. Be on a line with us. Ma'ai timing here. Taijutsu. The more I sink my knees, the more distance I get, the more I can see. And the weight of the sword alone with gravity will go right through what's there. No armor. A lot of swordsmen had no thumb. Go this way too. Riskier, because I'm now on the inside, he's stronger. I can still get him. But I went for his left wrist. This target's better, it's out farther. One more, do it with us. Slide. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. If I cut his hand off and he loses it, what's he gonna wanna do? Wouldn't you? I'm gonna take your wrist. I move. His wrist is gone as he cuts here. This way. <laughs> Watch again. All right. Slow. H. Knee. Take your time. His wrist drops. I'm not gonna move. He's, that's his attack. As he attacks, under. Using the curve, back step. Here, I just cut, here. Leverage. See it? God, this is fun. Do it with us. One. Two. Yo, he cuts. <laughs> Moving here. Monijutsu. Where did my left hand go? Between his arms. Let him have all the anger. All the anger. I just shift here. Taijutsu. Take control of what's there. See how I have control. It's not my hand doing the work. It's my arm and his elbow. And I'm controlling his legs. Here, I have control of the mm -hmm. opponent. Holding here. So you weave your way, weave your left hand in. Whoa. Here. And then death. She. Control the opponent. Hard for him to cut with his knee here. <laughs> Understand the movement, but you don't need your sword. You do not need it. I can be here in control with my own katana. I'm using the handle here. Feel that control, sir. Mm, yes, sir. Then if I just move this down, you will move into position. <laughs> then here. Okay. The point is, everyone hold your left arm, and I want you to bowl left hand. Just watch this hand. I'm really going to exaggerate. Chi no kata. Now it can't stay here. I'm no good. You can draw back, mm -hmm. get my control. Watch what I do here. My eye control the distance. Now I have him, at least for a moment. Okay? 
then using my pelvis, drawing the sword, I'm squeezing my side in, and a love handle if you have one. I don't have any. Mm. Does help to have a little bit of a barrel there. Yeah. Drawing out with one hand, possible, possible, if I'm squeezing the saya. Try this one out and give them a close shave. Go. <laughs>